I'm just gonna kinda lap these a little bit and try to get them smoother. This surface is already pretty good. This one has grooves on it. So I'll try to get this off. Call that pretty good. Okay, well that was definitely overkill, but I have this lapped pretty smooth, both sides. And I even did this one here. I'll use some uh, thermal compound as well. It's definitely overkill, but why not? Okay, so here are the two rectifiers side by side. On the right we have the new one. You can see it says 50 for 50 amps, and the left one's 25 for 25 amps. And I have that nice finish on the 50 amp. So we'll see if if we can get this put in. Take the lid off here. And here's the electric motor on the inside. This particular mower, it's still perfectly fine. I've only run it for about three hours total. I just want to get something better on there and then I'll make this my backup in case my new one fails. You can see it does have a little bit of metal heat sinking on the bottom. I'm going to try to incorporate that along with the new heat sink and the new 50 amp bridge rectifier. Okay, now there might be some roadblocks here as far as having the proper screws to get this undone. I've already taken a picture so I can get it back together with the correct wires and the correct posts. Okay, so that's coming out fairly easily. And there's what the screw looks like. It almost looks like a wood screw. And the rectifier comes right off. I'll pull these wires. Another problem could be if the heat sink makes it too tall. I don't think that'll be a problem. We can arrange the wires. Okay, so I can already see there's no thermal compound on this original one. So with our new one, we're going to have thermal compound and the bigger heat spreader. There it goes. Okay, so this is a stock one. Looks fairly similar to the one that is going to replace it. Okay, in order to get the screw in, I'm going to have to drill this out a little bit. Hopefully it doesn't uh, grip too bad. Not quite the safest way to go about it, but that's a good fit. Now it does go through all the way. Okay, so a slight change of plans. It looks like uh, we won't be able to use this heat spreader here. But what we can do is it looks like we can put this on a diagonal and that hole lines up perfectly. So we can put that on a diagonal there and it will fit right against there. And the cool thing is the way this motor works is a fan on the bottom side connected to the blade and it draws air in through the top of the motor and out through the deck. So when we put this here, it's perfectly positioned to draw a whole lot of air directly through this heat sink. So it's going to be extremely well cooled. Um, because that heat's going straight through. I'll have to make sure I orientate it correctly, probably that way, to get the best airflow. But anyway, it should be pretty amazing. I'm going to cut off these little tabs here. There it goes. That doesn't have to be flush. Let's see here. I also have to be careful not to hit the commentator with the edge of the heat sink. It's going to be close. I'm spinning the motor from below. Definitely don't want to hit that, so I'll be careful. Okay, I'm back with hearing protection. And yeah, we'll try this again just to kind of knock off about an eighth of an inch or so. Good enough. 
Okay, I think we're back in action here. I ground off the corner of the uh, heat sink here, that way it's not so close to the commentator in there. It looks a lot better. And next thing we're going to do is make sure we have the correct uh, one. This is the 50 amp. Yep, that's it. Dust it off a little bit. And then I actually have thermal compound. What is this? This is thermal right chill factor. Just for regular standard thermal compound. I'll put just a dab on here. Doesn't take too much. Especially when you have a nice polished surface. There's not a whole lot of voids to fill in. Oh, well, <laughs> got that amount out, so. Just kind of distribute that. Over the entire surface there. Definitely overkill for what this is. For one, it's a 50 amp bridge rectifier. 125 is stock, so it's already more. We have this great heat sink. Also, the heat sink's gonna have great airflow uh, through that heat sink, so this is gonna be way overkill. Let's take this and kinda, let's see, it's gonna be an orientation like that. So about like that. Then, let's put that there, find our screw, which we put right here, and this is just going into plastic, so I have a wood screw, looks like it found a hole, make sure everything's looking pretty decent here, where did that come from, that's the cap. Okay, so we're looking really good here. Get some downward force on it. Yeah, that thermal compound is really sandwiched in there. It's not touching the commutator. All we have to do is get the wires plugged back in. So this one goes to the brush. I think we're ready to try it. And hopefully there's no sparks. Well, I'd say that works perfectly. I can't feel a huge amount of airflow, but I know there's air going into the motor. So there's going to be a lot of airflow going through this heat sink. That's going to be a really solid, good job there, I think. It almost sounds stronger too, and it's probably just placebo, but it sounds great. Anyway, I think that's job complete. I might just leave the lid off because it looks pretty cool. Anyway, we'll see how it works out. <laughs>